All right, everybody, welcome to Hurdlers of Adversity, conversation with inspirers and maximizers of pivotal moments. Uh, I am John Register. I'm your host for today, and I can't wait to get this program started. And I'm not sure what's going on because I I, I had to restart the, the whole stream again because I was trying to see if I was pushed out to um, to LinkedIn. And I, it's got like this little error message on it. I'm trying to see if we're, if we're pushed out to LinkedIn. It, it says... Uh, uh, now it's going. Now it says we're live on LinkedIn as well. Okay, that is good because I was like freaking out. Like, why isn't LinkedIn coming in? So we have you on Facebook. We have you on Instagram. Uh, not Instagram, sorry, on YouTube. And we have you on LinkedIn. So we are live in the house. Thank you all for joining in. I want to go to my comment section. If you're on right now, please put that in the chat box. I know Lynn's got to be on. Lynn Keir is always on. So welcome to Hurdlers of Diversity and Conversations with Inspirers and Maximizers of Pivotal Moments. Uh, again, I'm your host, John Register, and I am an international keynote speaker, a change mindset warrior. And yes, it is Lynn's on from Charlotte. It's a gorgeous day there in Charlotte. Hey, Lynn, it was a great day in Maui, Hawaii, where I was for the past two days. So I was, I was really loving that. And I work with business professionals uh, to really uh, help them amputate fear and embrace this new normal mindset. My mantra is when truth outweighs fear, we commit to living a courageous life. Uh, so this is the show where you get the chance to get up and close and personal with uh, having really great courageous conversations and dynamic dialogues with inspirers and maximizers of pivotal moments. So thank you all for being on. So Charlotte's in the house. Who else? we got another person that's in. I see a number two there. So type in where you are from as well. And our theme this month is focusing on these bad A women, man. You know, because Women's Month, we got to celebrate the ladies out there. Um, yes, love the post from YSS Jet, jet Center. Yeah, we did a lot of jet setting, I have to tell you that. Tiffany, thank you for joining in from Hawaii. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Ohio. Ohio. Ohio is in the house. Um, yeah, we had a, it was a challenge getting into Maui. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I can talk about that a little bit later. Um, so before we get to our first guest, of course, you got to tell me who our last guest was. And um, Lynn, I'm not, I'm not going to keep on giving you all these gift prizes because you're always on. But I, I should give you something because you're always on. Um, so who was our last guest from last week? Got a prize for you. Hello from Missouri. Tracy Keys is on. That's my amazing rock star <laughs> professional admin. She's awesome. I, I love her to death. She's awesome. Love her, I mean, I love her to life because she's she is my life. She just makes everything work, especially when I was on my, my short vacation. Um, all right. So here's a question. Who is my last guest on the show? You got to type that into the chat box. And of course, I will have some type of gift card sending out your way. Got to put Lens in the mail last week because she guessed the right answer. And so put that in the chat box and we'll see. Hello from Missouri. We got Ohio in the house. So we have um, boom. That's one. You're such a jet setter, John. <laughs> Two. Good afternoon from Ohio from Tiffany. Thank you. We uh, we have a great guest on. And hello from Missouri. It's my Tracy that does all the, the great work here. All right. So um, please share this conversation with your tribe. Uh, please put that out there. Latanya, thank you for much. Latanya, yes. Of course, Latanya Moore was our guest from last week. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Please share this out with your tribes. Put uh, our guest that's going to be in on the chat. We always want to make sure that she's out there too. Hello, Delinda from San Diego. Uh, I mean, where the weather person needs no job. It's just, I, I can probably guess what is out there right now, right? 75 cloud covers just just, just uh, burned off and now you are into the afternoon. Must be uh, a nice um, uh, sunny day out there in San Diego. So I, I probably what's going on out there. San Diego, Linda, thank you so much for being in. Um, so please share this to Tribe. Put the notification on. Turn the notification on so that you will get these uh, notifications every single time uh, that we go live uh, from these platforms. So we're pushing out to a lot of different ones right now. So for those that are not familiar with me, real quick, my name's John Register. I'm the Change Mindset Warrior. That means I work with business professionals really to help them amputate fear and embrace a new normal mindset and win the medals that are in their lives as well. It rained a little bit yesterday. What? I guess the weather person did need a little job to call the rain, but I, you probably were barbecuing on the, the lawn, any front lawn anyway. Um, so my story follows this riches to rags to riches storyline. I was a world-class hurdler. Had an accident, dislocated my left knee, severed the artery behind my kneecap, and seven days later, I became an amputee. Ended my military career, ended my what I thought my sports career, 
Uh, and I really was kind of going down a downward spiral. And it was my wife, Alice, who says, you know what, we're going to get through this. We're just going to use a new normal mindset. And that kind of helped me turn the corner. So with that, I did uh, develop a new normal mindset, wound up swim swimming for physical therapy. And then four years later, after participating in the Paralympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia, went on to Sydney, Australia, and won a silver medal in the long jump in Sydney, setting an American record in the process, and began some other programs, some sport programs, to really help other people that were going through a mindset shifting process to help them elevate in their world as well. As well, So our, our guests have done similarly on this show. Each one of them has a platform on this platform through StreamYard, <clears throat> LinkedIn, or Facebook. Uh, we allow these dynamic conversations that just evolve and happen to help all of us, you know, make it through our tough times, our challenges that we have in life. We are like one year into uh, COVID-19 and we now have a vaccination in the United States. I got my first dose that was a uh, bit before I went to Hawaii, but you know what? Uh, I get a second dose coming up and more people are getting in it, I, uh, getting it. And I just want to make sure that um, we're not putting so much focus on the vaccination but you know what happens if we have different strands of this and how do we put ourselves in a situation where our mindset can always evolve, always shift, no matter what is thrown our way. So let's get into this conversation with our guest today uh, because we do have a phenomenal one and I wanna do her justice by reading her bio because it's just so incredible. Uh, she began her corporate career as at the stock exchange as a marketing manager and although after eight years she hit the glass ceiling how many times do you ladies have been out there doing that and have hit the glass ceiling you know even for you know people of color right same thing hit a glass ceiling it's not gonna happen and you know you, you're just not gonna elevate anymore so she shifted gears and found a more passionate profession in the 90s as an lpga golf instructor uh, as a pioneering entrepreneur she introduced a holistic uh, approach to golf performance and the groundbreaking high five system. Boop, high five, y'all. Uh, until one tragic day, she was struck in the head by an errant speeding golf ball and suffered a traumatic brain injury. That ended her career and put her on a path of recovery and completely reinventing herself. Today, she inspires and uplifts audiences uh, with how she reprogrammed her brain using some of the most innovative methods and strategies. And she shares how to maximize your own personal performance, whether at home or in the workplace. So please welcome, without further ado, the amazing, the one and only Kathleen Clowiter. Thank you so much. Kathleen, thanks for being here. Thank you, John. It's my pleasure, truly. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. We got a lot of folks on today, and they are saying, um, they haven't said anything right now about the show, but they're saying it rained in San Diego. A uh, little from San Diego. Latanya was our guest last week. Hello from Missouri. We've got Ohio on board, and we have Charlotte is in the house as well. So um, so let's begin with this conversation around, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit in your bio about you know, women hitting this glass ceiling. And, you know, we know that's a real thing with the pay equity structure. And you were climbing the corporate ladder. So what was the, the event that shifted you? Well, this is an interesting story because it wasn't a decision that I actually made consciously. Hmm. I, I knew that I was in a place that I didn't want to be. But somehow I couldn't break through the fog. It's kind of like the, the, uh, the clouds that are always there, sometimes mm -hmm. there, and then the sun shines through. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, the sun was always shining. How come I didn't see that? Yeah. Well, if you don't start to follow your heart and your passion, something happens in your body. It mm -hmm. starts to get sick over and over and over again. The, the cells start to reclaim that, oh, my gosh, we're not happy this is not the job for you. I'm making a lot of money. I have a house, a boat. I have, I live on the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. What, what else could I want? I wanted myself. Mm. And so I unfortunately developed Crohn's disease and that's a intestinal disease. And I, I had to literally leave the stock exchange with my briefcase in hand and went immediately to the Mayo Clinic. Wow. Yeah, up in Minnesota. And they had diagnosed what was happening. I had surgery within 24 hours. And after that, my rehabilitation was on the shores of Lake Michigan. And I started to think, I absolutely cannot go back to this job. My body has spoken. My gut, my very, the very gut of me has told me this can't be. 
And so then I started to think as I walked, well, what is it that I truly love? And I started to think about when I was a child and I absolutely loved playing outside. I was an athlete. I played softball. I played volleyball. I played basketball. Uh, in college, the same. I did all of the sports except golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I really, I would love to, to, to go back to being an athlete. And so the, at that time, at that age, I was 29, and, and the only viable routes was tennis, bowling, mm. and golf. <laughs> For obvious reasons, I chose golf because it's a lifetime sport. And I had vacationed uh, when I worked at the stock exchange. I had vacationed in Palm Springs, California, the golf capital of the world. Yeah. And I decided to go back there. And that's where I began at a cart wow. barn at a low end country club. And nice. within one year, I had my LPGA teaching card. Wow. Now that's what passion, uh, living your passion can do. When you, when you really hit stride with that, the universe just acquiesces and, and just puts everything in your path to help you succeed. And so, it was so easy. So the, the thing that, that, that kind of strikes me in the story, right, is in the storyline, is you have this moment where your, your gut's just not in the right place. And how many times, you know, do we have that, 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 that we, we know we're not in the right space and yet we don't have the courage to actually make the transition. In your case, you know, you had to go to the Mayo Clinic, you had to do these things, but what if you're just kind of stuck there and you know you're not elevating and you, you don't see the sun poking through the clouds? How do you help those, those women, you know, to, to, uh, to really find that passion and, and poke, poke through uh, the clouds so, so, they, so that they do know the sunshine is actually there. Well, as somebody who's had a brain injury now, I did extensive study with left and right brain. And it's our left brain that is the, the initiator, the doer, the analytical, the mm -hmm. mental, the drive, drive, drive. We have to keep going, marching like soldiers. We must, we must, we must. <laughs> and it's the right side of the brain that is the more passive, the more receptive, the more creative, uh, the more surrendering and allowing. And it's also your intuition, which now brings you into your body. Mm. And as women, this is huge. I mean, we have, you know, womb, we have the womb capacity. <laughs> and so when you move from an experiential journey as, as opposed to just a, a cerebral or intellectual path, now things uh, will start to fall into place similar to how the the uh, golf avenue did for me. Mm -hmm. Now, there has there there has to be a balance with this. And so if you're more left brain dominant, then we just start to work on some of the right brain aspects. And I fold this under an umbrella called uh, balancing the age of information with the age of intuition. Mm. And so once you start to learn that kind of a, it's kind of a yin yang, infinity ring kind of a flow, like I said, then you get into places that you never dreamed you could be. So say it again, balance the age of in information, information, yeah, which is more left brain based uh, with the age of intuition, which is more right brain based. Mm. And so, so you were beginning to do that, and you said you moved, moved to Palm Springs after you, you know, kind of, you said, I'm not going to do with the stock market uh, in, any longer, or be a trader, or you know, whatever your, the job was there. Marketing, yeah. Marketing, marketing. So, um, and then, so at the, why, I mean, I don't, I, I'm trying to understand the jump into, you, you didn't do the sport of, of golf before, but now you, you're becoming this instructor. What was the, the, that turning point that wanted to make you become this, golf instructor and something you hadn't done before? Well, I knew that I loved helping people. I knew that I, uh, I, I loved helping pe uh, love people to believe in themselves more than anything in the world because we're all equipped with uh, this inner guidance system. And sometimes if you have someone who can just kind of guide you and coach you or create the space for you to come into that or to blossom into that, then because it's not the left brain that's trying to figure it out, 
So you're not going to figure it out, John, <laughs> unless I take you through this journey. Uh, it'll it'll be uh, something that comes through you from within you. But I mean, I don't you know if I answer no, that. Well, I'm I'm saying you know because there's there's so many different things. I mean, you have the the tennis, you had basketball, you have uh, volleyball. I think it, it, th those are things that you said, and so you have coaches in each one of those sports, and it seems that makes to me that's that's the easier kind of path is to is to coach inside of, you know, kind of what you know that you've already been through, like in the tennis, uh, the swing or, you know, uh, running after a ball or, you know, when do you crash the net? And then using those metaphors to help somebody in their life when you need to press in, when you need to, to go lateral, when you have to, uh, you know, have to elevate, when you have to swing hard. Those those seem like you, you've already done it. And now kind of you're, you're, you're shifting into this whole new um atmosphere of, of coaching and you're getting coached yourself to, in order to coach somebody else. That's what kind of intrigues and fascinates me and, and why you chose the, you know, uh, chose golf instead of the other things that you already knew. Well, bowling. Oh, you, so not bowling then, or well, well, bowling, no, bowling. I mean, it's an, it, it's, in, it's a, it's an indoor sport, you know, smoking yeah. and drinking, blah, blah, headache, tennis. There's an age limit certainly on that. I mean, you, well, with the exception of Serena Williams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so golf, like I said, was a lifetime sport, and I okay. knew that that I could easily fall back on. But here's something else that really intrigued me about golf. You're outside. You're out enjoying nature. You're uh, enjoying the aesthetic beauty of being outside in the original sacred space. Uh, what a great place to work on body, mind, soul uh, endeavors you know, the sport called golf. Yeah. I, what's, what intrigues me about golf all, all, all the time, and I'm, I'm not a golf, I don't play golf. I, I mean, I, I've done a scramble or two, you know, but I, I'm not really a, a, a huge golfer, um, is it's, to me, it's a sport that can't be beat. And there's always, there's always a hole that I could have done better on. There's always a shot I could have made better. And there's always this, this improvement. And that, to me, is like the, the coaching dynamic I think about when I'm thinking about golf. Is that kind of what you pull from it or is, are there other elements that you're pulling from there as well? There's definitely other elements and one is just appreciation, especially after I was hit in the head with a golf ball. It, so, everything changed a little bit because now I was just happy to wake up in the morning and appreciate being able to, to see the, uh, the, the trees and the grass and at that time, actually, I had double vision. So I had to really move into my body more. And when I would walk on the earth, I would really literally have to sink into my body. And, and, the, and the earth, because of the vibrational frequency of the earth, it literally came, start to come up to meet my every step. Okay. So it put me more in tune right away with the natural rhythms of the earth and life. Wow. So I there's there's something greater than marking the scorecard, a left brain activity. I there's something that I coined happy to just be happy. Uh, I'm happy to just be alive and breathing today, and especially in light of everything that's happening right now. Sure. My goodness, it can happen in an instant, and it did for me. And so getting down to the gift of appreciation and and really taking it to a deeper octave and sinking into yourself to listen to that deeper wisdom. What is your true normal? Forget about the new normal. I know you love the new normal, but I, I wanna know the true normal of you. What's your truest passion? What is your truest destiny? Now, wouldn't that be fun to take a journey on that? For, for sure, yeah. So, and, and uh, cause it is, it, 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 we use that as the, as getting to people's truth, right? And And that's, and we, we, what happens when we, we don't is we have, we live a lot of regret. Um, and we have, there's a lot of fear that comes in there. Of course, fear is not, fear is what we conceive in our own mind. It's not actually happening to us. It's a future state. And if we can articulate the object of our fear, then what I call, I, I use the new normal as a, as a plateau by which we grow. Uh, um, and, and it's a, it's never, it's a never ending states kind of like what I was, was going with, with golf is that you, it's, it's a, it's a game that you always can get 
better at and it, it, even the tranquil uh, setting of it i think what what attracts uh, a lot of people to it i mean i used to walk golf courses all the time in my in my training because it's it says you're right it's tranquil it's peaceful and we have a uh, and delinda was saying here i wanted to see this you know agreeing with the intuition that she says uh, that you were saying uh these skills are past generations uh um, that did not, she says, not respecting, but um, there are more female skills, which bears out well for future of, of, of leaders there. And so she says you're, you're selling her on golf. So that's, that's the, the thing and in, in, in combining these, these two together. So if you have a question again for, um, for Kathleen, please write them in there. I'd love to just read those out as we're having this dialogue around um this embracing this this uh this mindset shift and and actually when you said that the, the truism one of the things that we've i've done with the, the own my own brand is um I, I was saying when vision outweighs fear now i've said when truth outweighs fear uh we commit to living life courageous because that's what we are trying to drive to and a lot of people are deflecting off of truth because they, they want on somebody else and not on side on themselves so, uh, so Diane, Par Diana Parker's on. She says, hello, John and Ms. Clowitter. Uh, that's <laughs> t Tampa is here in the house. Thank you, Tampa. We got Tampa, we got San Diego, we got North Carolina. Um, so here's, and if, you, and if you're enjoying this conversation, something resonated with you, please uh, put the at sign and put Kathleen's name there and, and push her out on what you have learned thus far on this, on this show right now. All right. So People have spoken a lot about this year in terms of making a pivot. Uh, and you had a tra tragic, tragic accident that happened. I want you to walk us through that moment. You've, you've shared a little bit about, you know, being struck in the head with the golf ball. But what really kind of, what was going on? What happened in that moment to, to have that type of injury? And then kind of walk us through what your process was to uh, kind of come back to a, a new sense of self. Well, what I call this is a direct hit. And I was actually facil facilitating a golf league, a ladies golf league. And I was merely walking from the parking lot at the country club to the golf shop. And I was on a cart path that led to the golf shop. And I stopped momentarily to write down some names on a scorecard. Uh, and then something suddenly shot me right in the head. And it felt like a stake was driven right through the top of my head and out my left eye socket. And it was so painful that it felt like a bowling ball had dropped on my head and just kind of sh shimmied right through my body. And in an instant, uh, the, the green grass and the asphalt were spinning. I went down and that was the end of my life as I knew it. The pioneering golf career that I had was gone. My life uh, was shattered and I became a dependent woman. Wow. So there were many things that happened after that. Uh, of course, I, I was in the hospital and then I started the long rehabilitation process, but through, through uh, neurolo some no neurological training. But then there was something bigger and deeper that happened. And because my core communication center was taken out, something else had to take over. Hmm. I also had double vision. I had equilibrium problems. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't speak. Yeah. Um, so like I said, something else had to take over. And again, that gets back to that, the eye of the storm, that, that inner guidance really started to kick in. I really had to, well, because I, I had, I was stopped. I, I mean, some people, are stopped, like what happened with COVID last year when everybody sure. stopped. But I was stopped by this incident. And like I said, started to move from a more experiential, spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets to, well, well, what did that feel like? Well, it, it like, I, like I said, I felt my feet on the earth, but I also felt this sense of being more presently aware because I, can I could only be in the moment. There was no going back. There was no going forward. I was just right here. And I started to feel something. And I, the only way I can describe it is, is uh, the life force moving through me. It was kind of vibrational. It would almost be like what we're, we're coming upon is uh, the sights and sounds of spring. Mm -hmm. when when the snow melts and water comes gushing through the mountains and the next thing you know 
little seedlings that have been inside down below the rocks and the leaves, they start bursting forth and growing. Well, this is what started wow. to happen to yeah. me. I had been in this dark tunnel. I mean, I saw my life through a dark tunnel. Wow. And, or a kaleidoscope, I should say. But when you start to feel that life force within you, there's nothing stopping it. It is your natural state. And it's as simple, if you don't understand, uh, it's as simple as, um, everybody has an iPhone, right? Yep. Here's mine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I finally That's got one, one last year. <laughs> um, but it's like my camera. <laughs> it, it, the the cell phone battery will start to die, you know, go down mm. after time. Right. And we have to find a, we have to plug it in to something so that it recharges. And that's the electrical charge that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's actually I, one. The only way I can describe it is is that we there's a vagal nerve with inside of us, and if yeah. we stimulate that, and I, I do that through breath movement and sound, and I did it quite by accident in my yard with humming bees. Believe it or not, I matched the sound of humming bees, and th that actually was the vibration that stimulates the vagal nerve from the brain, and it wanders or branches out through the rest of the cells of your body. So that starts the rejuvenation process. The brain starts firing up. I love it. Um, we're getting some comments coming in here. I keep looking down here to see, you know, um, Diane is saying, um, momentarily aware is a great way to describe what you are going through. Great description. Awakening is wonderful. Yes, yes. awakening. Uh, awakening. And then, um, then Kathleen's resilience is so impressive. Absolutely. So, um, and it's all so, within you, the resilience. I have yeah, to say, you know, everyone... I think there's a, you know, I, I, you know, again, I try to look at, um, so here's Delinda too. Uh, she says, uh, uh, I was sold on golf, but maybe golfing with a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. Like, like, <laughs> golf with a helmet. Uh, <laughs> and a license. <laughs> I, I always say, if they didn't have the little white ball, it'd be called walking. Oh, it's <laughs> right. A good walk in the park. A good walk in the park. Yeah. Good job. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about them in, re in resilience and I want, I want to get into kind of your points that you make about, um, you know, the, the, your high five inside of your book, um, is in resilience. I, I think maybe you can attest to this is not so much the rubber band snapping back to its original form, uh, because I think in both of our cases, our rubber bands broke. Exactly. So it's kind of putting how you put that rubber band piece together, or is it a rubber band, or is it a whole new construct around that? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I'll give you a really good example because because you because you have to be in a place of allowing for something new to come in, and you have to be open to something new to come in, and something which you never ever really thought of. Okay, yeah. so I'm my head is hurting. I'm walking to my my appointments and i was like oh you know is there an answer is there anything so, you please help me something in the fog i hear my dad's polka band <laughs> my dad's polka band now i'm <laughs> polish and i absolutely love accordion music so here's this accordion music playing in my mind and i yeah. start to come alive i mean this talk about life force music which is a universal language, by the sure. way. It crosses any political, racial, gender, religious boundary. It, it's right. the resonance of the one and our togetherness. I, I hear this and I turn my backpack around and I pretend I'm playing the accordion. <laughs> and I feel comforted. I feel That's loved. Great. I feel a sense of belonging. I feel something familiar and my neuropsychologist, brilliant neuropsychologist, she said, high interest things will, will really move you through this quickly. Mm -hmm. Right away, we got an, an accordion instructor. Now, I had a person trying to learn a five variable <laughs> instrument. Okay, here we go. But this is the baby steps that I'm talking about. I had to live my life one variable at a time yeah. and give that specific focus to one variable. 
I learned the bass first, or the instrument itself. I learned the bass, then I learned the treble, then I learned the beats, then I learned a measure of a song. Then I started to put it together, then I started to play it. Three or four years later, guess what? There's Kathleen in the middle of the rose garden playing <laughs> La Vie on Rose. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> and now, just for the fun of it, on a keyboard, I'll play, you know, if I only had a brain. So. <laughs> Take that. <you> know? <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Uh, so, I'll try so to see that's something more. that I didn't know that I could do. This is really important for our listeners because yep. you may think, well, how do I make the bridge from a corporate job to what I want to do? And you've got to be open, you know, to the letting go and the surrendering process to allow something to come in that sweeps you and takes you because you're ripe and ready. Believe me, if everybody has to be about ready now because of this, our circumstances as a whole. Right. Um, you know, uh, you, you're right. And I, when I look at resilience uh, there, I, I look at it in a, in a, in a, in, a, in the standpoint uh, I was trying to find a, a video, not a video, but my, my a, sc a screen share. I don't know if I can actually uh, get it, but I think I think maybe I can. I'm gonna see if I can share it right now. Uh, now nah, it's just gonna it's it's all it's all flickering. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see? Yeah, stop, it's please stop. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. It's, it's, it's stabilized. It's stabilized. Oh, cool, so, cool. Uh, so I'm not sure how why it's stabilized or how it's stabilized. But so in resilience, right? We have these ten letter word of resilience and embedded in the word resilience. I always look at the R first because the R is, for me, the R stands for ritual. Ritual develops into a rhythm and the rhythm elevates us to our rise. But what you were it. saying inside of that, like when you talked the accordion and you talked about this kind of, the silence that you had embedded in the word resilience is the word silence. Oh my goodness, that right? is so, beautiful. So that's, you know, I always share that because a lot of times oh. people don't hear their own voice first before they actually, you know, move out into what they want to to do, and that is, you know, I I think is brilliant. It's, it's you got to hear your, your voice first before <laughs> you actually you actually move out. Um, so yes, Kathleen, open up and allow the new to come in, says Diana Parker. Uh, and and then so we'll see if anybody has, has came and in. The nope, true, the new and the true. What's your true, true right, destiny? Right. Absolutely. So um, so um. You, you developed a system, and I want to talk about this before we kind of get into our our our, our, our six uh, beautiful That's sound. Needs to be part of the process is what this is what Karen says. Karen Lundquist, sound needs to be part of the process. Absolutely, Absolutely. first step of the process because the, the starter will always say quiet for the start, and that's where we begin to have our, our thoughts before we actually go off into the race. So, uh, talk a little bit about you know you're going through this process and you come out with this epiphany and you have this kind of high five process. How do you develop it? How do you apply it? You know, what is it? How do you apply it? Um, how do we get to this 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 process you developed? Yes, I first developed it as an LPGA golf professional back in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can say it. 1990s. We're all amongst friends yes. here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, where were we? I, you threw me right off the, yes, the merry-go-round, which is the, the, the high five, the high five system. You know, oh, that's how, right. how to how to how do you apply it? You know, how to do it? You know, what, yes, uh, I developed it, it for my for my golfing clients and the College of the Women's Golf uh, Team mm -hmm. because uh, at that time the LPGA was even just focusing on mechanics. I'm like, it's more than that. It's more than that. And so I was also on a deep spiritual quest uh, at that time. I had gone to India. I had learned Eastern philosophy. I studied the eight, uh, eight, the six or seven major religions of the world and other spiritualities. And I started to combine what I learned and, and saw how uh, my own personal development was accelerated. Mm. And uh, uh, it brought me to an optimal level of, in my life and in my sports. And so I started integrating that into golf and it was very successful. Wow. Uh, our, our, uh, the College of the Desert Golf Team was, uh, we were the state champs, we were undefeated. It, it was a good couple of years that I had done that. Golf, wow. Golfing clients really loved it as well. And it, that's at that time, I don't know that anybody was uh, speaking about that. I don't even know if Deepak Chopra was. So. <laughs> <laughs> so today though, the same principles hold true. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be golf. It can be any vehicle. You see, what, I, what I've created is, is the driver, is the, uh, is the fuel, is, is how you get there. And so the first one is uh, be, staying in the present moment 
that present moment awareness. And the best way to get there is uh, through your breath sometimes and focusing on your breath. Mm -hmm. The second one is um, to focus on exactly what you desire. And this one I know can be kind of tough because of different distractions in the world, but the more that you stay focused on exactly what you're pursuing, the exact task or goal, the quicker that you'll get there, that magnifies it. And actually the distraction goes away. And if you can think of it as the light in the dark, and when, once you turn the light on, it's hard to sit in the dark, right? Yes. Yep. Number three is to believe in yourself more than anything in the world. And I love this one because if I had believed everything that every doctor and every person and every, well, I won't say <laughs> what else, but, but all of the external circumstances, I wouldn't be here where I would have been dead three times over. No mm -hmm. kidding. You have got to develop that strength within yourself that says, I believe in myself more than anything in the world. Mm. And then the fourth one is um, just giving yourself some good old TLC. And we definitely need that now. And I, TLC is the, I think, is it called an acronym? I, I say um, self-trust, self-love, and self-care. And women, you got to get on board with this. I know sometimes you're the last ones to do this, but we got to take care of ourselves as well. And there's really some fun ways to do that. And then the last one is about routine. And I, I talk about a, a daily routine or your daily routine for, excuse me, in golf, I talk about your routine, your setup. Mm -hmm. But in your life, it's your daily routine. And uh, that's just to help overlay a new habit that you absolutely love. Right. Because life can be a joyous uh, adventure, as opposed to uh, some, you know, negative trip of misery at drudgery. I love the idea of a positivity bias. Let's get on that train, huh? That's <laughs> the brain train that I'm on. I, I like that. You know, uh, one, I was writing them down. So stay in the present moment. So I, I look at it uh, when I was coaching. I'm not a basketball coach either. But <laughs> one, of the th one of the things that I was t teaching free throws is you can't be thinking about the last 10 free throws you missed. And you can't think about if you don't make, make these two, you're going to lose a game. You got to focus on this one here and this second one there. Um, t think Love and grow that. rich. Uh, uh, focus on what you desire is always that. That think and grow rich is the the famous. Uh, book by Napoleon. Hill. I love that and, book. Uh, yep. Maybe that's so, where I got it. Yeah, it could be, but that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I your, love your I desire love Napoleon is, Hill. Yeah, it's straight in there. Yep. Uh, and then bet on yourself. I love that. You got to, you know, because <laughs> no one else is going to bet on you. You need to bet on yourself. <laughs> Um, and then my wife, she's a flight attendant, so she always says on your number four, give yourself TLC, is you need to put your oxygen mask on first before you yep. can help anybody else. So I love make that sure analogy. That you're doing that. Good uh, one. And then uh, build build great habits for our routines. We talked about that a little early in the resilience piece. So yeah, so we're going to stop right there for just a, we're going to pause right there for a moment. And we're going to jump into our JR's uh, Inspire 5. So I want to, I'm going to ask you five questions. Uh, actually, they're going to be six. Um, and so and before we get into that, we, Diane says, uh, Diana says, uh, self-trust, love, care, forefront, start with yourself. Absolutely, 100%. Um, and so when, it's just first thing that comes to your mind, uh, there is no wrong answer because I wouldn't know if you were telling the truth. <laughs> it could be oh, what, you, what you want to say. Um, so, so here we go. Uh, th th we're going to do six. Uh, and Tracy says, yep, put your mask on first. Absolutely great. Love it. For 100%. All right. Most memorable coach you had? Oh, my gosh. It was my softball coach. Yes. Softball he, coach. Yeah. When he said, he said, you know, when the tough gets going, the going get tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the golf course you would like to play the most? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, how do you? <laughs> Um, I'll make it easy. Uh, Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where you go to think? Ooh, I'll tell you what. Any rock, tree, forest, ocean. <laughs> yep, I'm a water guy. Um, best coffee house. Kathleen's Cafe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, okay. And then the, the last one is what um, what comes to mind when you hear this quote? 
The jump is the jump. When truth outweighs fear, we commit to living life courageously. Oof. Yes. You commit to your truest desire, your true normal, your true destiny. I love it. Um, and then the final one is person who you would uh, think would be a great guest for the show that you know that you can call up for me and tell them to be the next guest. Oh, oh that I know. I was going to say Serena Williams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, call her up. I want to get her on the show. <laughs> How about Libby Gill? Libby Who's Gill. Libby, Libby Hill. Gill. Okay. She's right. a, yeah, she's a, a, an excellent uh, executive coach and leader. Awesome. Love it. Okay. You got, you got some for me? I, oh my gosh, do I ever. First of all, every time I watch, I see this piano in the background. Do you play that piano? I do play piano. That is not a piano. That's a full oh. piano. Oh no! Oh no! Sorry to yeah. oust you. So yeah, but no, I I do I do play a little um, piano, a little gospel piano. Mm -hmm. Ooh, love it. Okay, uh, tell me a place you visited that you didn't expect you'd love. Uh, Uzbekistan. Ooh, where is that? It's just it's just south of Kazakhstan. Which is oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so here's this will go well with this. Tell me about your most memorable plane ride. Oh, my most memorable plane ride. Um, hmm. Probably, probably this last one <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to Maui because we, we had to, in order to get to Maui, we had to do actually, I see one, two, three, four, five, almost five trips, five, oh, five flights. Because we got there, we got turned around. <laughs> so it's, it was my family is my family. Yeah, patience, patience, my little absolutely. grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of the three, which one? Chef salad, tuna salad, or potato salad? Tuna salad. Ooh. And uh, that letter opener that you like to give away sometimes. Yeah. Do you would you would you be open to changing the the sentence or the the two word prompt to true normal? It already. I mean, well, the, the answer is yes. Um, no, no, I, 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 I keep on em, embra embracing. Em embraces the, the 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 key word in there. Um, so whether it's new normal, or true normal, you need to embrace it, and and, and people either reject or they accept it. So that's the, that's, the, that's the key word. Sweet. Yes, okay, yeah, cool. it's, I I have a whole there'll be a whole line of them. So embrace Sweet. the new normal, embrace the true normal, uh, go forth, inspire your world. We got we got all, we got them all. So. Okay, and then the last one is, what's your favorite music you like to listen to when you want to unwind? Oh, it really depends on the mood, but right now what I'm thinking about is Yo-Yo Ma, mm. uh, cellist. So um, oh. I, love, I, love, I love him, how he plays the, uh, the box suites and Rococo variations on the theme. So mm, beautiful. Those are, those are, those are two, two of my favorites, so yeah. Fun. Yeah, so great. I love it. Yay. I <laughs> uh, love, love that. Um, and um, so the, the final thing I want to do, I want to, does anybody else have any questions on here? Because I, I want you to make sure that you're putting out uh, Kathleen, make sure you put the at sign on her and push her out to LinkedIn or if you're on YouTube, make, make sure you're following her and make sure that you're getting her book. I want to make sure you did get, you have the book, right? And so I want you to talk a little bit about your book. Oh, my book. Yes, yeah. Direct Hit. I have it right here. Yeah. It's called Direct Hit. And it's uh, it's the journey of my life. And it talks about the before the hit and what I did. And I was a pioneering golf professional teaching a holistic approach in golf. And then it talks about the the tragedy of getting or the tragedy, I should say, of getting struck in the head with a speeding golf ball. And then all of the different unusual methods that I did along with neurocognitive training to really live an optimal life again. And how um, I followed some of my own, uh, my own methods to get where I am today to continue to lead uh, a very good optimal quality of life. And the best part is now I get to share that with everybody. So take the journey, it's a joyous adventure and there's many different morals and vignettes in there that are very touching and uh, very insightful, very inspirational. I love it. I love it. So the name of the book is True. I mean, I'm sorry. The name of the book is Direct Hit. Direct yes, Hit. Yes, a golf professional's remarkable journey back from traumatic brain injury. 
Awesome. So that's that's it. So thank you, uh, Delinda, for for putting that for putting that in there. And I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to to be with us and really encourage our audience here. We have a lot of great interactions. I'm sure there's going to be even more. We'll we'll post this back up. We'll give you some links. You can put it out yourself uh, because I think the, the the comments that you have are, are really help a lot of people. Women, yes, but I think just in general. You know, we all need that coaching. We all need to take that that moment and and just get out and smell the roses and and be out in nature. Um, because as we can see during COVID nineteen, we just need it. We need that human interaction, that human connection, that touch, uh, and that and and golf I think does that very well when you're around a lot of individuals. So thank you so mm. much for being on. My pleasure, John. Thank you. This has been delightful. So how do people find you? That's my last question for you. You can go to my you? you can go to my website, KathleenClawwetter.com. That's K-A-T-H L as in Lion E E N K L A W I T T E R dot com. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you being on and uh thank, thanks a bit. We stick around for a second. We'll, we'll uh I got some more questions for you after we wrap the show up. So blessings to you and, and thanks for being on with us. Thanks again, John. For sure. All right. What a what an amazing lady there. Wow. I, I, I hope you really enjoyed that conversation. Like I show my age, go back, rewind the tape, uh, get the A track, hit forward <laughs> so you can push that forward again. Uh, this month, a good Women's Appreciation Month, and we have a lot of great women on each Thursday. Uh, we'll start at 312 in the afternoon. So make sure you're marking your calendar, save the dates for those. Next week, my guest is Diana Kander. Oh my gosh, another rock star. And she's just a curious person. You're going to want to see that uh, so much. Karen, you are so welcome. I love that uh, that you're on today. Karen, of course, I, she's my friend from, uh, from Amputee Coalition. I've known her for a little while. Uh, Diana, of course, wonderful, inspiring session. John and Kathleen, have a great energetic evening. Yes, ma'am, we will do that. Um, and I want to make sure that you know that we have the book that's my book that's um, on Kindle right now. We're getting into paperback. I've been saying that for like four weeks now, but we are getting closer every week. <laughs> so just one more week and we keep keep on going. So that's 10 Power Stories to Impact Any Leader. Journal your way to leadership success. Thanks to Linda. I appreciate that. Yeah, I love the energy. We got to have the energy. Keep the energy going. And my glasses. See my glasses? My clears. They just came in from the VA. I love it. <laughs> Veterans Administration. <laughs> so love that. Um, so um, the, the book's on Kindle right now, so get it on there. Go to our Facebook group because we, we will have another uh, event that's going to be happening there. The Facebook group, of course, is facebook.com slash groups slash amputate fear and you will be in the group and i'll just make sure i just join you uh, get you in there subscribe to the youtube channel hit the hit the notification button so that you will be notified every time we go live so remember the quotes of the day when truth outweighs fear we commit to a courageous life and anias nen the one this one is mine i, I love this one and the day came i gotta say it with my voice and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Oh, I love that one. I love that I love one. That one. <laughs> that's a great, that's <laughs> a great one. So remember, you are the inspirations. Inspirations are the catalyst to motivation. Motivation in turn causes actions. Actions lead us to transformation results. And those results re-inspire us or they allow someone else that's watching the process to catch the vision. Go forth, inspire your world, everybody. We'll see you back here next week on Hurdlers of Adversity, conversations with inspirers and maximizers of pivotal moments. Bye for now.